Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tom Evans. I'm a 29 year old runner based in the UK, uh, living in Loughborough at the moment. Um, I started life in the military um, and while I was serving as a captain in the Welsh Guards, I competed in my first ever long distance race that was the Marathon de Saab, which is a 256 kilometer multi-stage self-supported race. Uh, across a part of the Sahara Desert. Uh, I ended up having the most incredible experience uh, and really caught the bug for ultra running uh, and managed to finish on the podium uh, in that race. That was incredible. Uh, and I was yeah, far beyond anything that I thought that I was, I was ever going to achieve. Uh, and that has then sort of started this running bug for me and have sort of competed all around the world, uh, competing in ultra marathons. And then at the start of last year, um, once COVID had hit, sort of, I made the decision to to focus a little bit more on the road. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have a couple of half marathons, uh, raced the half marathon world championships in Poland uh, for uh, for the British team, which was amazing, uh, and had an incredible time out there. Um, and yeah, I'm sort of just just in the process of stepping back onto the trails. Um, for what's hopefully going to be a good year. Um, so I've been asked a couple of questions or quite a few questions uh, that I'll go through over the next 25 minutes, half an hour. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, and if you've got any follow-up questions, uh, please just reach out uh, either to Athletics Weekly uh, or through my social media. Uh, and yeah, I will do my very, very best to get back to you. So questions. Uh, who are some of the athletes running and non-running that I draw my inspiration from. I think there's just, there are so many different, so many different athletes from so many different sports and I sort of try and stay away from, try and stay away from sort of pure running. I think there's a lot of crossover between running and cycling. Um, as obviously an endurance sport and the kind of athlete to, who really inspire me with cycling is uh, athletes like, young athlete like Tom Pidcock, um, who actually this a couple yesterday won his first ever professional race racing for Ineos and what I admire about Tom is that he this is Tom Pidcock I'm not talking about myself in the third person I promise uh what I love about Tom Pidcock is he does kind of similar to me sort of any terrain any distance like he will race road he will race cross country he will race cyclocross like it's a uh, and i guess it's sort of kind of what i'm trying to achieve in running sort of not just sticking onto the trails but also racing mountain road cross country and fortunate enough now to have represented great britain at trail running mountain running cross country running road running uh and so we've just got the track, um, but I think uh, I th I'm not sure that will that will ever happen. Um, and then another athlete that I draw a lot of inspiration from is Sophie Coldwell, uh, my fiance, who's a professional triathlete. Just seeing the amount of volume that she does with day in day out, two if not three sessions a day, every day, seven days a week, um, and it is incredible. And so to see that sort of drive and determination, sort of doing multi sport. Uh, I feel incredibly fortunate to just be a runner. So even though my volume might be quite high, uh, it's only running, um, which is great. So the next question, uh, how do I train for the longest events, given the experience of 100K or 24 hours or whatever is almost impossible to replicate in training? Yeah. So when I am training for long events, I will race with a maximum of two thirds or I'll run a maximum of two thirds of the distance that I'm training for. So a hundred mile race, what I will look to do eight weeks before, um, or maybe even a little bit longer, sort of eight to 10 weeks before, so depending on the calendar is to race a hundred K race. Um, yes, it's not exactly two thirds, but time wise, it, it's, it's pretty similar. Um, it's so much safer doing things in a race environment where you've got that support from the race itself. Maybe you've got crew members, you've got medical support and yeah, it just really helps with that organization um, around you that, yeah, like you say, you, you cannot replicate these things in training. Um, so yeah, you've got to do as much as you can. And I think another thing that I do is I do a lot of back-to-back -back days. So long runs on 
uh, a Saturday or a Sunday, or I'm a fortunate enough to be a full-time athlete, so I can do it during the week if, if that fits better with, with my training plan, where I might do a four-hour run on day one and a three-and-a-half hour run on day two or something similar to that, just to, to get that fatigue in your legs but without risking too much because, yeah, running 100K uh, is, yeah, is incredibly challenging uh, and is, is tough on your body. Uh, do I think that I can break the Western States course record? Um, I was fortunate enough to race uh, Western States in 2019 and finished third and broke 15 hours for my first ever and only 100 miler to date um, at Western States. And Jim Wormsey, who is the, the current record holder, broke the record that year. Uh, yeah, I think, I think anything is possible. I think the great thing with ultra running is, yes, physically everyone's fit and physically you can get fitter but it's just so much so much about your mentality that that fills into these races and being mentally stronger is something that you may not be able to measure in a tangible way but you can get yourself mentally tougher and mentally stronger and yeah i think i think anything's possible and i think if you believe you can achieve something then you definitely can and as we've seen recently sort of all, lots of records being broken i think that's for me that's incredibly inspiring to see and yeah definitely something that uh something that i don't chase i'm very much a, a process focused athlete uh, and then the outcome the outcome follows so yeah i think if i train as hard as i can and i'm super consistent then yeah i think anything anything's possible what do you find is tougher on the body ultra trail or marathon running very good question um i changed coaches uh last year from Alison Benton uh, to Andy Hobdell and coaching styles are some similarities but also a lot of differences so I'm really looking forward to to doing a, a training block with Andy focusing on the ultra trail distance and we've sort of cooked up some really cool ideas of things that I've never done um, I think the marathon train marathon training is really tough because you're so it's probably a bit more stressful because you're so focused on times and splits and running paces Whereas ultra trail running, you're more focused about running the actual distance. And yeah, there's just not quite so much data and quite so much metrics that you need to, you need to really be aware of. So yeah, I think I, I probably prefer, I prefer the intensity of marathon training, but I prefer the duration of ultra training. So um, yeah, I probably haven't answered that particularly well, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to sort of combining the both because actually they don't, they don't look, they don't look that different. Uh, my favorite song to play before or during a run? Uh, it's another good question. Um, I guess it, it really varies. I sort of like listening to sort of fairly upbeat music that I can sort of sing along to and sort of distract a little bit while I'm running. Um, but a lot of the time I won't run with music, especially on the trails, because I just sort of enjoy looking around and seeing the scenery. And yeah, sort of, I say sort of being at one with nature, I think just sort of, being able to fully engage at the time, like I don't necessarily want these distractions. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's sort of a way to help you get a bit mentally tougher is music. Yes, it's not the easy way out. And some people say, oh, I can't run if I've not got music. But actually, I, I love I love running without music, um, especially out on the trails. Have you ever had a race where you felt absolutely 100% with how your training led up to it? It's pretty much ever, every race I've been in, I felt like it could have gone better. Yeah. I think the longer that I run, the I realize that there is no such thing as a perfect buildup. Something will not necessarily go wrong, but there will always be some form of complication during during a block. And you can always do more. But I think it's really powerful. Instead of focusing on what you haven't done in training, focus on what you have done in training, because there'll be some amazing things that you have done. And just remember yes you could have done better but you also could have done a lot worse um so yeah be happy with where you are and actually if there are places that you feel like it could have gone better write them down learn from those mistakes so that then next time when you are building up to a race and you are into a new training block you can try and incorporate those lessons and learn from those mistakes so you can sit on the start line and look at yourself in the mirror and say actually yes i gave i gave 100 percent um so yeah i think it's i think it's a great a great thing to be able to do and to just gives you that that extra bit of self-confidence 
uh, which part of the race is the hardest? Obviously, when you're at the beginning, you know there's a long way to go. It must be tough. When you're around halfway, you know you've covered so much distance, but there's still a long way to the finish. Yes. And I have a bit of a, a bit of a trick for this. Um, I don't see, if I'm racing a 100-mile race, I don't look at it as a 100-mile race. I'll break it down into sort of bite-sized, manageable chunks of distance. So whether that's, so for the 100 mile that I did in the US at Western States, uh, I broke the course down into four 25-mile stages. And yes, 25 miles is still a very, very long way. But for me, that was with the training that I had done and going into that race, 25 miles was, as a standard, I don't think it ever can be standard, but that was a distance that I felt really comfortable with. And I just broke it down. And I, a lot of people like sort of to use uh, their sort of GPS watches. Um, and I use a Garmin and I think it's incredible. And what I do is I put, I put four different GPS folders onto my Garmin. So it only, the furthest that it said that I had to go was 25 miles. Um, so yeah, just breaking things down. And that can be done for, if you're running a mile on the track, it's sort of four laps and you just don't see it as four laps in a row, but you see it as right, lap one, lap two, lap three, lap four. Um, and I think just breaking it down just really helps, really helps you mentally just to, to see what that challenge is that you are doing um, and sort of gets you to the finish line in sort of as high spirits as possible. But yeah, very much sort of a process and tick off the miles rather than just thinking about getting to the finish. Um, da, da, da. Next question, how do you look after your feet running all those miles? Would you recommend any insoles? I think this is such a, such a specific thing, thing. Like I very rarely, I very rarely suffer with, with blisters and a lot of people will sort of say, oh, what, what are the best shoes not to get blisters? But your shoe isn't necessarily the most important thing. The majority of blisters actually come from rubbing and that is then your sock rubbing against that area of your foot. So I think a pair of, a pair of really good socks. Um, and if I'm sort of doing a long one, I will put, I'll put talcum powder uh, in the bottom of my socks. Not much, just with a light dusting. Uh, then put my sock on and then put my shoes on. Uh, I get a lot of questions what socks I wear. Uh, I have tried absolutely everything um, and I have now chosen to wear stance socks, not paid by them. Uh, I, buy my, I buy them myself. Uh, I think they're quality uh, and would massively recommend anyone to try them. I think they are really good. Insoles, I think is a difficult one. Some people respond really well to them, but it all depends on your biometrics uh, and your gait. And if you need them, then, then great. And yeah, I've... I have gone through stages of uh, of using insoles and of not using insoles um, and have been using the gait motion analysis uh, team. And they've, yeah, they've been incredible um, and sort of really helped me in my build up for, for the Olympic trials. Um, but yeah, I think you need to go and you need to go and see, see a professional about them because it can really, it really depends on the individual. Uh, what do I have in my cookie jar to use when I experience mental or emotionally challenging patches during long runs or races? I think more so in, in long training runs. Um, and actually, if I answer the, the races first, racing is, at the moment, it's a little bit different because there aren't crowds, there aren't spectators. But a race, there are people watching you. You're sort of almost other people are holding you accountable so finding for me, finding that motivation is really easy because I know there are people who are, I know there are people who are watching and I know that I've trained incredibly hard. So I've got to give myself the best chance as possible to do as well as I possibly can. And then I think in training, you sort of can look at it both ways, sort of, I sort of look at it in two different ways. Sort of firstly, I look back in time and I think about all of the hard work that I have done to get me into the place that I am currently, whether that's leaving a leaving a great career in the army or it's the sacrifices that i've made sort of to miss friends birthdays weddings you name it i've missed it so i can go on training camp or go away and race and then i also then think to the future and think like right what am i is the, think about this training now this is going to really help when you get to that race and i'm such a goal based athlete and i'm i'm a huge believer of setting goals sort of 
process goals, outcome goals, short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. And it's something that I've been working really hard with uh, my sports psychologist at Red Bull. Um, and they have, yeah, they have sort of just got me thinking in a different way on, on when I write my goals. And I think so if anyone, anyone can write a goal, but actually having it sort of set out in the correct format to, to make it specific, realistic and achievable as well, I think is, is a real skill. And sometimes you might need some help to do that. So yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask for help when it comes to, when it comes to things like that. Um, come my marathon PB 226 is pretty modest compared to my other achievements. Uh, what do I think I'm capable of and what happened to Tom during the Q gardens trials? Uh, yes, I ran 226 in 2017, 18, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and I think I'm capable of running a good marathon. Uh, the training that we were doing was, so I did all my half marathon time PBs last this year and last year on, uh, on marathon training, uh, and around 63 low which I was really happy with. It's not setting the world on fire by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah, I was really happy with it. Um, and yeah, what does that equal to on a marathon? Jeez, oh, who knows? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's something that I would, it's something that I, I will do again. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved, I loved being able to train with a group and fortunate enough to train with Kev Seawood and Frank Baddock, um, who were both coached by Andy Hobdell as well. Um, and yeah, and then what happened during the trials? Uh, at mile 22, I collapsed. Um, I then spent the next 36 hours uh, in hospital, uh, very well looked after. Uh, and then since then, I've done lots of lots of different tests uh, with Professor Sharma, uh, who is the pretty much the UK's leading sport cardiologist and is the head doctor of London Marathon, um, and can sort of thankfully say that sort of all of those tests came back as clear. So actually what happened, we're not 100% sure. There's sort of a couple of different theories. Um, was it a fueling issue? Uh, my white blood cell count was really high, which would sort of indicate a, an infection. Um, but yeah, I think it's one of those ones that it happened. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I feel good now. And sort of feel like I'm fully recovered and sort of back into training now, which is which is nice. Um, but yeah, I was I was really disappointed as I put a lot of effort into it. And physically it was it was a tough one, obviously, sort of collapsing, but mentally it was almost tougher to swallow as putting so much work into it. And I've had you know, more sessions with my sports psychologist in the last two weeks than I'd probably had in the last two years. Um so yeah, it was it, I did get I was low and it's of these times where you sort of realize, yes, running is an individual sport on during the race, but actually it's such a huge team sport. Sort of, I'm so fortunate to have such a great team that I've sort of built around myself that, yeah, you realize that actually running is very much a team sport and you realize who you want in, who you want in your corner, the people who are concerned for you and sort of get, want to get you back onto your feet as soon as possible. And then, on the other side of the coin to the people who don't reach out uh, and sort of don't, don't really want to know. Um, so yeah, that for me, that was, that was really interesting. Uh, can I talk through some of my training influences, coaches, runners, literature for both ultras and for short distances? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think my training influences, I'm, I'm a big fan of sort of the Canova style of training. Um, especially with the special blocks. I think special blocks, which is where you do two or three sessions sort of within two or one or two days of close proximity sessions. They're not all out sessions, um, but it's really training you to be physically incredibly strong, but arguably mentally even stronger. Um, and so, yeah, and I think sort of our, our training is very much based on that. We, I'm more than happy to train at 90, 95% of what I'm capable of for a year rather than trying to train at 100, 105% for four months because it's so easy to get injured, especially the risks that I'm prepared to take in training. Uh, running on the trails, running in the mountains at points are just definitely not worth it. And I think sort of the order that I get, it's very much not about training harder, it's about training smarter. So 
Uh, I use a lot of cross training um, when I train and that sort of bike and cross trainer. I just think it's such a useful, useful tool to be able to build that cardiovascular engine, uh, but also just reduce the stress uh, and pressures on, on your joints, ligaments and tendons and sort of let them, let them heal and adapt to the, to the hard training. Um, other runners, I think it's such a huge split sort of between the U S with this, with ultra running uh, with the U S and with Europe, the, uh, European sort of ultra and trail runners sort of tend to be sort of very mountainous and they'll sort of ski mountaineer in the winter, whereas the Americans sort of more sort of from a track cross country background, which is sort of kind of where I see myself a little bit more. Um, but I think I think everything is everything sort of can all be all related together. Like I don't think you have to pigeonhole yourself into one type of running discipline. Like I hope that I've shown people that actually I I love running. And I, if I want to run 10K, I'll, I'll run 10K or 5K or cross country and been fortunate enough to get some amazing experiences at all, at all distances, which I really think makes me a better all-round athlete um, when I go into the ring uh, in, in my big races. Uh, and then the final question, uh, do I plan on racing the longer distance UTMB in the future? And do I think that ultra racing should be in the Olympics? Yes, 100% with UTMB. Um, it's, yeah very much my goal uh in the next couple of years whether it happened this year or not probably not but yeah so for 2022 utmb is going to be a one of my one of my a races uh, which i'm really excited about um but for me living in loughborough just making sure that i get the right level of training uh with training camps uh, and also sort of getting enough elevation uh so running uphill and downhill in my training is really important uh, and then finally, do I think it should be in the Olympics? Uh, yes, I think it would be, it'd be amazing to be, I would love nothing more than, than to go to the Olympics and sort of to bring a bit more light onto the weird and wonderful world of ultra trail running. Um, and so, yeah, I think it, it could be, do I think it's representative of society? Uh, yes, I do. It's, I think in, La, in 2018, ultra running was the biggest growing sport uh, in Europe. So yeah, I, I'd love to see it there. And um, yeah, I think it'd be, be incredible for the sport. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all, the, all of those questions answered. So thank you very much for, for everyone who sent those questions in. And like I said at the beginning, uh, if you have any further questions, then please do reach out and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Uh, but until then, stay safe, keep smiling uh, and look forward to seeing you all, all on the trails very soon.